because they fell into the trap of Churchill said. For RAF, it was a victory. For the Luftwaffe, the battle had ended in tactical withdrawal rather than annihilation. So not all of them share this view it was an RAF victory. When people ask me why the Luftwaffe lost the Battle of Britain, I have to reject the question. I don't consider that Germany lost the battle. I think the end result was neutral. Nobody won. The figures say otherwise. Four months of fighting had cost the Luftwaffe nearly twice the number of aircraft lost by the RAF. It was a decisive margin. The Battle of Britain is sometimes described as a draw. I think it was a victory. It was a victory in the sense that it prevented the Germans from doing what they wanted to do, namely invading Britain across the Channel. Of course, Nazi Germany hadn't finished with Britain yet. The Battle of Britain was over, but now would come the Blitz, months of relentless nighttime bombing of British cities through the winter of 1940. By May of 1941, that had failed too. Hitler could wait no longer. He had a new target for his bombers and fighters, the Soviet Union. So in the spring of 1941, his great air armada left their French bases and flew east. The Blitz was over. But of course, the war itself was not. Final victory wouldn't come till 1945, but it would not have come at all had it not been for what the RAF achieved during their hurricane and spitfire summer of 1940. In the scheme of the war, the Battle of Britain was a tiny engagement, but in terms of its historical significance, it is, I think, one of the crucial battles of the 20th century. What was at issue was whether or not Britain would stay in the war against Germany. If it had not been fought at all, or if it had been fought and lost, then there are only two possible outcomes to the Second World War. The Nazis would have invaded the Soviet Union anyway, and they might have won. One of the most awful scenarios that one can contemplate. The alternative is that the Soviet Union would have won, but it would have won by itself. And therefore, the whole of Europe, from the Urals to the Atlantic, and down into the Mediterranean would have come under Stalin's hold. No wonder Churchill's rhetoric now took on near prophetic force. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. Churchill had persuaded an apprehensive country to put all its trust in the pilots of fighter command, and they had pulled it off. If I was asked what was owed to the pilots who won the Battle of Britain, I would say all they've ever asked is to be remembered. And that's all. They don't want thanks, they just want you to remember that we won this battle. Not necessarily for you, it's for the country. And we're very proud that we did. Dave's Battle of Britain training is now drawing to its climax. Peter Kinsey has been teaching him the classic repertoire of aerobatic skills. Rolls, loops and half Cubans, to add to what he already knows about navigation and formation flying. In 1940, Dave's next home would have been an operational squadron, where, like those who went before him, he would have had to apply all he had learned to stay alive in one of the most ferocious air battles in history. There remains only one last thing for our trainee Spitfire race to do, a graduation display demonstrating his newfound skills. On 
on the ground to watch him are his instructors, Brendan O'Brien and Carolyn Grace, as well as Battle of Britain pilot Pete Brothers. Wonderful sound. when you came back to your home base? Ah, uh, it was frowned Initially. Upon. Initially. And then we stamped on it. Why? Too many people were whistling in? Yep. And it, you could have had battle damage, which yes. you didn't know about. Yes. Dave's come a long way since he first climbed into a Tiger Moth. He's joined an exclusive club, pilots who have not only flown the Spitfire, but flown it close to its limits. He's been given a unique insight into at least one aspect of what training for the Battle of Britain would have been like. Well, Pete, that was amazing, that. Thank you very much. Oh, I say, it's good fun, isn't it? Nothing, yeah. nothing quite like it. Nothing quite like it. Now it is time to meet someone who did it for real. Hurricane and Spitfire pilot Pete Brothers, who shot down eight enemy aircraft during the summer of 1940. You enjoy it? Yeah, like nothing else. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And now the crucial question. After nine hours at the controls of a Spitfire, <laughs> how would he cope with combat? How do you think I would survive? Yeah. If it was back there 50, 60 I, years ago. I honestly think I would... I'd fly the aircraft, that w it wouldn't be a problem. You'd give it a good go. I'd give it yeah, my very yeah. best shot. I think yeah, I'd do. I think you would too. Okay, it just, as long as he's 109, as long as nobody <laughs> spotted me. <laughs> That's the one, yeah, it's the one you don't Like see. all Battle of Britain yeah. pilots, Pete Brothers had a number of tricks of his own, designed to make himself harder to shoot down. So I always flew with a bit of rudder trim on. So if I was jumped, I wasn't going when the chap fired ahead with the deflection. I wasn't going there. You wasn't I was pointing there, but I was actually going there. Okay. <laughs> so sort of slipping or skidding across the sky? Yes. It's just a little bit of trim, that's all. Really? Doesn't Didn't affect your performance. Uh, extraordinary. The only thing, you, you took it off before you fired, yeah. otherwise you were pointing <laughs> yes, the wrong direction. the wrong direction, yes. But it meant that when you were jumped, you didn't get hit. You'd see the stuff going past. Excellent. Now, that must be the best way to see 